Hi, this is Dennis Seatsman, Homestead, Florida. The video, this video is uh, how to repair the new style Briggs & Stratton uh, recoil starter. Uh, as many people know, the old style had a ratchet and ball bearing mechanism which was worked well but the balls would stick inside the mechanism and have to be uh, corrected one way or the other. Uh, you could get the balls to go uh, start working again by wrapping on the engine pretty pretty soundly or the case or take it apart and clean it. Uh, the new style uses a pawl and the pawls uh, it's most modern engines use a pawl type a Paul and cup type recoil starter uh, but on the Briggs and Stratton they, the Pauls will break and you can buy an entirely new um, you can buy an entirely new recoil starter uh, for this for an 8 horsepower uh, 1992 vintage uh, on my Coleman 4.4 kW engine generator that I'm trying to restore uh, but anyway the recoil starter uh, can be replaced for you can get the whole mechanism for thirty to fifty dollars depending on where you get it uh, on this engine I had the old style and then I put it in the shop for repairs and when it came back the uh, mechanic had decided to replace the recoil starter with the new style using this uh, cup assembly and the way it works is uh, these when you pull on the cord there's a little friction that causes the pawls to come out okay I hope you can see that I'm going to try to get it closer to the camera but when you pull on it the pawls come out okay and they engage with the starter cup well there's different type starter cups I have found in my research and there's different Paul sizes. So if the pawls break or you lose the little fr uh, springs, uh, it's not going to work properly. In this case, <clears throat> my housing rusted out and I had to buy a new housing. But when I pulled on it, it destroyed the pawls. So when I did my research, I found the pawls come in if, if my research is accurate. And if I make any mistake, post a comment because you know I could make a mistake I, I don't see any of the videos on the internet about this new style how to repair it without replacing the whole thing uh, but from my research there's 32 and 38 millimeter poles and you can't tell or I can't tell from my research which was which uh, so I went to several shops and they couldn't tell me either uh, but I find the Pauls are sold by most of the big box stores. Uh, but when you go to the store, you, they don't have them. You know, they're special order. You can only get them online. So again, you can't look at it. Uh, so you know the the big box stores that have it are Northern Supply, uh, Northern, uh, Walmart, uh, Lowe's, uh, Home Depot. But when you go there, the pawls, you can't see, you know, whether they're an inch and a quarter or an inch and a half or 32 or 38 millimeter, if my research is correct. Well, I needed the inch and a quarter. And from the online reviews and Q&As, I saw that uh, from my research, most people were getting the inch and a half ones and having to cut them down for inch and a quarter. I needed the inch and a quarter. I needed the 32 millimeter. So I took a shot in the dark since I couldn't find them at stores and uh, I had to order something just to see what it was. I went to Amazon and I ordered their repair kit and uh, I don't have a part number for that but it's, it's described online as a rewind starter repair kit for Briggs and Stratton that it includes part number, get ready to write this down, the 6922 nine nine friction plate now on mine I broke the old friction plate there's actually a fraction fracture in the friction plate there's a fracture in there so I couldn't read I needed a new friction plate which is uh, the six nine two two nine nine friction plate 
It comes with two springs and they don't give you a part number and those are teeny tiny springs so don't lose them. Uh, make sure you work on a surface where you can recover the spring if you drop it like a, a shop towel or uh, carpeted air, some place where you where the springs won't dance away from you. It has uh, two part number 281505 Pauls. That's 281505 Pauls. Uh, it comes with the uh, 691696 screw. And I'm not sure if this screw fits mine or not, but I forced it and made it work. And it has the 26. 3073 spring retainer which is a little tiny clip so anyway I got the assembly and once I have it in my hand I looked at the numbers on it and the numbers on the package say X is an x-ray 002 is in Charlie Z is in zebra E is an echo B is in boy uh, 7 F is in foxtrot that's X 002C Z E B 7F is on the package for you with people with freeze frame maybe you can pull that off the package anyway it fit it worked uh, so now I'm going to put my generator back together and we'll see if I can start my engine uh, there's another number on the package. It's 26 13587. 26 13587. So, anyway, I did all this fooling around to try to avoid paying $30 just to break another Paul and need another Paul again, even though I've got a new housing. And these old Briggs and Stratton engines, the housings rust out and. Uh, if you have access to welding equipment and sheet metal you can fix it uh, but most people just buy another housing now if you do that make sure you save the numbers and I did on mine and transfer them to the new uh, housing case um, but anyway uh, the cost of the kit was six dollars and thirty nine cents with Amazon Prime for me six thirty nine Today is uh, January 17th, 2021, so prices could change. Uh, and I'm telling you this because I think a lot of people are looking for these Pauls, but it's best if you get the kit because then you get the, the friction plate and the retainer. And once you get this kit, you have to figure out how to put those springs in. Well, the way it works is the Pauls, and there's plenty of pictures of the Pauls on the internet, so I'm not going to bother to try to focus in on that this video. But the Pauls sit on little tiny posts in, on the other side. But before you put the Pauls in, you put the springs on those little posts sticking up. So you put two springs in first, then you insert the two Pauls, and then you put on the friction plate and the orientation of the thick friction plate has to be the right way and again you can move this plate to make the paws come out uh, and stay out but the purpose of the springs is to make those paws come out with friction and go back in as you see it there and I'm spending time on this because if I had known this information when I was doing my research the information I'm sharing with you now such as the part number for the short pauls, the, the inch and a quarter or 32 millimeter, if my math is right. Uh, and I, the way I measured it is I just have one of these old, old school calipers, not a fancy one digital. These are like these millimeter, these measuring sticks are handy and they're just a few bucks at places like Harbor Freight or Northern or many other places at $2.99 or something like that or you can spend 20 bucks 25 bucks for the digital one but if my measurements are accurate and if they're not or I make a mistake please post a comment if you need these part numbers again from what I said please post a comment let's use the comment feature in YouTube to exchange ideas and get a better idea but again I found this kit 
on the internet advertised as rewind starter repair kit for Briggs and Stratton and it includes the 692299 friction plate with two springs the 281505 pawls and the pawls are the hard ones to come by besides the springs and then a screw a 69696 and then a 263073 uh, retainer spring and you know like I said I got this out and it has a number on it and I assume this is probably from somebody like from Stens or you know maybe Terrell Terrell fixes all you know I, I, I posted a message on his website saying Terrell help me with this problem and uh, I didn't see a response and I asked some other people so Apparently, this is uh, information that maybe a lot of, and I went to several shops and nobody knew how to help me with this either. So, and who wants to spend thirty dollars and get the whole assembly when you can get a repair kit for less than seven dollars? And if it breaks again, then you you get you, at least now with this video, you know that you can order just the pawls and if you take it apart carefully or you don't lose the springs and you don't have damage to friction plate all you need is the pawls now I saw some people saying they want metal pawls but I don't know if they could be made in metal because uh, these nylon pawls are very precisionly made to fit in everything else so I don't see anything wrong with the design uh, if when you pull the cord you keep in mind you got plastic parts in there and Honda has a similar design I've never seen anybody complain about the Honda recall starter uh, I mean it basically uses the you know and this was pretty easy to change you take the old you take the old design Briggs and Stratton uh, ball and ratchet mechanism off and you put on this cup and then you swap out the you swap out the recoil assembly which is like only four screws one two three yeah four you know pretty easy to change from the old style to the new style on Briggs and Strat now <clears throat> now that I've told you the really important stuff about how to I can go into the history uh, I got this engine generator after Hurricane Andrew in 1992 and I've used it for years and this 8 horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine is like really durable uh, the weak spot is people get water in the carburetor on it and you know uh, other people wanted like eighty to hundred dollars for a carburetor but I found one online for twenty dollars but after we installed the carburetor it only rent wants to run for twenty minutes and quit and that's another problem so I'm gonna to have to go to some place like Mike's carburetor and ask their technical support uh, how come how to solve this problem it's probably they got a plastic float and it has to be replaced with brass or something like that but I don't know so anyway I replaced the carburetor now I've replaced the housing I paid a couple of shops to work on this generator uh, I paid one shop to replace the muffler on it because I don't have welding torches and it took heat to heat it up and get the old muffler out and then I paid another shop to put it back together again because I'd taken the carburetor off and it had been so many years since I went to put I couldn't remember how to get it back together again at 3600 rpm for a generator so took it to a shop that works on generators and they charged me for doing the carburetor, putting the carburetor on and getting it running but then it didn't you know didn't run for more than 20 minutes so I took it back to the same shop three or four times and you know finally uh, I realized they can't they don't know how to fix it or they don't have the patience I don't know what but I realized I have to fix it so anyway here's where I am you know I tried to start it and then the power pulls broke so it's been one setback after another for me on getting its eight horsepower yeah I know on eBay you can buy the whole engine for twenty dollars or a hundred dollars uh, on eBay uh, eight horsepower from 1992 which is an old flathead engine 
it's not an efficient engine compared to modern day like the Honda GX 390 uh, which is a 13 horsepower that everybody loves uh, that they use on modern engine generators and modern pressure washers uh, and Briggs and Stratton is doing their best to come out with new engines to compete uh, but it seems like the pecking order today is uh, Kawasaki is at the top of the engine heap followed by Kohler and then there's Briggs and Brand X uh, you know with Briggs being the least expensive engine available new today and uh, you know I haven't tried the new Briggs so I don't know but anyway this is Dennis Seats Mom, I'm a do-it-yourself enthusiast in Homestead Florida and next step in this video is I'm going to try to put the housing on get it running today today's January 17, 2017 please like share and subscribe if you are a do-it-yourself enthusiast like me uh, and I do the do-it-yourself stuff to help other people uh, and I like to work on my own stuff because I'm thrifty and also because sometimes I hire people to work on equipment for me and I do a better job than they do because I do the research and I find the answers on YouTube or on by calling different companies and talking to their technical support people sometimes talking to people on the phone calling technical support speaking to a human being is the best way to interact uh, although I do a lot of email these days right now I'm trying to fix my old spa I've got a, a leaky suction port and I'm trying to find the right tool for that so sometimes I take photographs and email technical support and you know seems like there's always some consumer issue that I need help with so I'm constantly doing that and when I have learned something I try to share it uh, with my audience via YouTube so next we'll go to the generator and we'll put on the starter cup and we'll try to get it running that'll be next in this the next segment in this video I hope if everything goes well if I can find the pause button okay that's the engine generator I'm working on and uh, it's 4.4 kW Coleman Powermate from 1992 now I, it looks like a 21 millimeter is the best socket to fit but uh, to put on the cup 20, 20 one millimeter and I have an air tool and an impact but and I replaced this coil too but you have to make sure you get spark if you get no spark then you flip it over because the polarization uh, you can flip it over if the polarization is wrong and I'm told Briggs and Stratton will repolarize an old flywheel for you for the a new ignition if uh, you send it to them, but you have to pay shipping both ways. But I had to put this uh, this cover on first, and then the cup. Now there's an indent here for a starter cord, but it doesn't go far enough, I don't think, to be usable to do it without a ratchet. But I don't know why they didn't make this a little deeper when they, I could have chiseled that out and done it, but. Anyway, next we'll use the air tool to, to tighten up that bolt. Then I'll put the cover on and we'll see what happens from there. Okay, I've got the uh, housing back on and uh, oh boy, four bolts and the housing's back on. I have the uh, I have the uh, oil minder wire cut because the sensors bad on it and the wire was chafed so I'm gonna do some wiring on this uh, it only has one wire from the coil to the switch to kill the engine and the other wire goes from the coil to the oil minder to ground it and I've got the recoil starter working and I've got this hair dryer as a test load. You're supposed to have generators attached to uh, your water pipe ground so you don't get electrocuted. So 
don't start one of these unless you got a good ground on it but anyway uh, the recoil starter feels good now so we're going to turn this on we turn the choke on and I plugged in the hair dryer to find out if I got power coming out of it anymore been years since it's been started so we'll see what happens I need to do some more work on the carburetor, do some fine tuning, get it to run a little bit smoother. But for test purposes, I proved it works. I plan to replace the fuel line with the Tigon like five millimeter clear fuel line so I can see if fuel's going to it all the time, as opposed to the black line where I couldn't see. Then there's a warning too on from the carburetor guys. If you take the carburetor apart, make sure you pull the uh, the main jet first because you can break it. Anyway, hope you like my video.